Fortune Magazine and other sources say that the Boise market is the most overvalued market in the United States. But are they looking at all the facts? Are they determining as to why that might be the deal? We'll dive into that right after this. Everybody, Mike Petrus here, your star realtor of Star and the Treasure Valley, coming in with another video here to where we're going to go ahead and address and break down a recent article that came in from Fortune Magazine and other sources too as well, now claiming that the Boise, Idaho housing market is now the most overvalued in the entire United States. And we're not talking by a little margin, we're talking by a about a big margin. So as you know, if you do live in the Treasure Valley over the last few years, our housing market has definitely exploded in price and there's no denying that. But do they have the reasons as to why this is happening truly correct? And is their predictions of a housing crash, market correction, a significant one, or even a market correction of even a smaller one, the correct answer as to what is going to happen in the Boise market over the next few months to the next few years? So hang tight with me real quick. Let's go ahead and go into my PowerPoint presentation and we'll take a look at it all. All right, everybody, let's go ahead. Let's dive into the PowerPoint presentation portion of this video to where we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, analyze and pick apart the Fortune Magazine article and really kind of determine why the Boise, Idaho area has really exploded uh, again, if you live in the Treasure Valley, I know that you know it yourself as to why and the reasons probably as to why, but let's go ahead, dive in, figure it out and put it down. So first off, Forbes magazine said that they had a couple new surveys that came from uh, Florida Atlantic University and Florida International University to where they were looking at the nation's most overvalued homes and they determined that we were topping the list. Uh, homes in the gem state, according to them, were selling for a stunning 80.64% premium based upon a history of past pricing. Now, what they are basically doing here is taking an algorithm, which took in a ton of different factors to be able to come up with this number. And they were looking at our values from even pre-crash all the way to today. And of course, again, if you live here in the Treasure Valley, you do understand the reason why the demand became as huge as it did. And we're gonna go ahead and break that down in just a second. But according to, well, before actually we get to that, I just wanna to wanna to show you the difference in other overvalued areas that they were talking about as compared to Boise itself. And they were saying that we are overvalued not just by a small little number, we are overvalued by a ton. I mean, look at second place in itself. We are just a little bit above, below 30% difference in overvalue, according to their algorithm, than Austin, Texas. Uh, if we do take a look at some of these places that we're looking at, it will kind of set the tone as to where this conversation is going to go. But their main reason that they figured that the Boise market was absolutely exploding was because the work from home trend was responsible for that. They figured because of the work from home trend that people moved out of these big markets during the pandemic and look for less dense areas that offered attractive amenities. Well, is it really just because of the availability from work from home? Or was it really the attractive amenities that really started bringing people into the Boise area? And what are those attractive amenities? What made the demand as hard as it was and, and as hard as it has been? But before we start diving into those details in particular, Let's go ahead and let's take at the uh, comparable between the listings and solds that have happened all the way back in January, and then we can compare supply and demand, because really that is where a crux of this comes in. Our demand became so high that it sucked up all of our supply and housing prices just sky absolutely skyrocketed with it. But why the demand? We will again get to that. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at the supply versus what was selling 
uh, back all the way from January 2020 to August of today. And you can see that we had some inventory on the market here in 2020. And it wasn't until we got to about May to where that demand just absolutely took off. Everybody said, that's it. I want to get out of wherever I'm at. And I want to come to Boise, Idaho because I like it because I like the amenities. But what amenities? So you can see, though, that the souls caught up. They started stripping our market bare. And they did it all the way up until January of 2021 until it started to flip flop again. So whatever inventory we had really got down to basically almost a two week supply that we had available in both Ada and Canyon counties. And as you know, iron law wages, the more demand, less supply is just going to absolutely skyrocket our prices. And that is exactly what happened. We skyrocketed at 23.7% last year equity gain in the Boise metro area, which was number one in the entire United States. Absolutely crazy. But as you can see from now, from January 2021, coming up until August, we do got some inventory returning to the market. We can, you can also see that the solds are still kind of keeping up. And if you look at the days on market that these houses are sitting for, it is still very, very low. So the demand is there. Inventory is coming back, but if you listen to some other YouTube personalities or some other articles, they're saying that our inventory has absolutely jumped up to some astronomical level over the last year, which is going to result in a crash or a huge market correction. Well, as we're looking at this data right now, we're just kind of not seeing that in the cards, but as interest rates do change or as people maybe do jump out of the market, We'll kind of see what happens with that in the future. But as of right now, the demand is still huge. And we still got to respect the demand as to why people are moving here. And the inventory is reflecting it. If we go to Canyon County, you can see that too as well. Inventory, inventory, May, boom. Oh, there went the inventory because the demand came in and everybody bought it up. And it wasn't until January until that started to flip-flop again. And then again, some inventory is coming up, but you can see that the solds are also catching up. So there's just no basis here as of yet to uh, the argument for a huge crash due to inventory and interest rates. It just is not in the cards as of yet. And our demand, according to days on market, et cetera, are, is still huge. So why the big demand? Uh, there's a lot of reasons, but let's just go ahead and, and talk about really the big elephant in the room. And that is because of values. Pure and simple values. When you move to Idaho, you are moving for conservative values. Most of the people that we are getting are moving in from out of state. They're moving in from states like California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Nevada. I mean, even Texas too as well. But really, there's something within their states that they had just absolutely had enough of. I can attest because I'm one of them. I am a refugee to Idaho, and it was absolutely the best decision that I ever made. Okay, so not only to that with the conservative values, because if you do look at voter registrations right now, we are still five to one Republicans or conservative values coming into the state as compared to Democrats. So there is a reason that people are flocking out. And if for a lot of you that are watching this video, that could be a very obvious reason. And that just struck a chord with you. You said, oh, yep, Mike, that's exactly the reason I got out. Well, now you're in a state that is also better run. And we can see that as we kind of go through these. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll start off with cost of living too. So obviously Idaho has a lower cost of living than other states. For example, if we take a look at our grocery prices on average, we are number three in the United States. Our, our cost of food is not as expensive as everywhere else. And it, it reflects, we do have farms everywhere. We've, we've got uh, organic availability just right around the corner if you wanna move here to this state. If we look at our utilities, our utilities are the lowest in the nation. And a lot of people don't realize this because Idaho is actually 70% renewable energy. Idaho is on 70% hydroelectric renewable energy. So states like California are trying to catch up with uh, wind energy, solar, all sorts of other alternatives to where, well, Idaho figured it out. And so those savings, they do get passed on uh, to the consumer. And it, you can see it right here in the proof in the graph that we are the lowest utility cost 
in the entire United States, even when it comes to ga natural gas, et cetera. Even amidst the housing that we've been talking about, everybody's saying, oh, housing uh, in, in Idaho has certainly jumped up. Well, of course it has. Again, supply and demand. Why is the demand coming here? This is just more reasons. But even with demand as crazy as it is, and us being the most overvalued housing market in the United States, you can still that, see that we're just a little bit really over mid-price, the average of what it costs to live, uh, to, to live in a state. We're not doing bad. Uh, there's other states that we're looking at, like Hawaii, New York, California, Massachusetts, Oregon, Maine, and Maryland, that are way over, or much more overpriced than we are in terms of uh, what you're going to pay for for a house. Uh, transportation, even. Uh, we all know that inflation rates have jumped up uh, massively since this new administration has taken over. Uh, but even with gas prices the way that they are, uh, grocery prices rising, all that kind of stuff, we do know. Uh, we're still ranking just below, um, just below, at, or sorry, just below midpoint in the entire United States when it comes to the overall transportation cost. So we do have that value there that is just a lower cost of living, and it does show. And people that live here that have moved from other states, uh, especially like myself, just took a huge sigh of relief. You know, we look at our bills as to what they were from where they came from and then put them all in together to what we've got today. And I can honestly attest that my electrical bill was more expensive than all my bills put together. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And people see that it reflects and it brings up the demand. Number two on our list is amazing outdoors. Now, I, you know, I'm used to amazing outdoors everywhere I go, and Idaho just absolutely does not disappoint in this. Uh, I mean, really, if you like backpacking, kayaking, trail running, uh, like they're saying, um, me, I'm a dirt bike rider. Uh, I love to uh, do single track riding, and the single tracks out here are considered by most pros to be the best in the United States. So really, Idaho has a lot more behind the scenes than a lot of people give it credit for. Now, because when they come out to the Boise area, they say, wow, there's a lot of farmland around here. You know, where, where are my mountains? Where are my trees? Where, where are those things that I was used to in my other state? Well, they're just kind of not in particularly the valley topography wise. So if you look at the topography of Idaho, all the way from Boise to Twin Falls to Pocatello to Idaho Falls, it's basically kind of like the valley farmland area. But everywhere else, you're going to get uh, trees, mountains, valleys, uh, just absolutely gorgeous sites. I'm not saying that Boise, Idaho, and the Treasure Valley isn't, but if you do travel to other places like Stanley or McCall, Donnelly, Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint, Lewiston, uh, the views just become absolutely breathtaking. And just to kind of show you, uh, if we take a look over here in the bottom left, this is the Stanley area uh, to the Sawtooth Mountains. And uh, you can see forest and lakes. And if we look in the upper right, this is the Quarter Lane area, uh, just absolutely pretty. And even uh, when we're in uh, more or less of the valley kind of area, this is Shoshone Falls, which is just north of Twin Falls, which is considered the, Ni the Niagara Falls of the West. Sorry, Niagara is always a tongue twister for me for some reason, but I've been there and it is absolutely breathtaking. So Idaho is definitely not short on scenery and things to do. We have a ton. So there is plenty to do out here and that secret is out of the bag. Friendly people, that just kind of speaks for itself. And really it's something that if you've moved to the Treasure Valley, you know why. And if you've even visited Idaho before, and especially the Treasure Valley, you can see it. Everybody says hello to you. People shake your hand and people say goodbye to you. The community feel is very, very tight knit here. Uh, even, even amongst the neighborhoods, very tight knit. Neighbors get along to with one another. They wave at one another. It is absolutely mind blowing if you're coming from other states to where you're basically keeping your head down because you don't want the interaction with someone else and do because of reprisal. You come out here and it is completely 1000% different. And I do invite you to come out and see it for yourself because you'll be absolutely blown away. Uh, also, that kind of correlates to the low crime rate that we'll get to here in a second, but this is a place where people, because of the communities, 
because of the neighborhoods, because of the people want to raise their families. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's dive into the crime rate and we'll start going into uh, why this is so popular for families to, to move to and for other reasons. But really, Idaho has just got a crime rate of 4, 1,400 incidents per 100,000 people, making it the state with the third lowest crime rate in the entire United States. Uh, some of the safest cities are including like Rexburg, Haley, Middleton. And according to SafeWise, only about 2% of the Idaho residents have reported personal experience with violent crime in the past year. So they really place us 10% below the national average. If you start diving into city by city, most of our cities throughout the entire state of Idaho maintain an A-plus rating with their police departments uh, nationwide. It, when they say 10 points below the national average, they are not kidding. Uh, aggravated assault is the most uh, common violent crime in Idaho, according to SafeWise. Uh, but literally, again, our, our police departments are on point. People see that um, we haven't defunded the police department. In fact, actually, even in Boise, they gave a raise to the police department, which is a lot of uh, things that a lot of people like to see. And really, when it comes down to it, they protect our neighborhoods. They protect our way of life. And our communities enjoy that and our neighborhoods enjoy that. And, and they have, again, that comfortable sense of feeling that they want to raise their families here. If we're taking a look at schools, okay, schools uh, around, especially the Treasure Valley, most of them have op optional mask mandates. There are a lot of school freedoms here. Um, if you homeschool, there's a lot of homeschool freedoms. You don't have to uh, go get these crazy registrations and do certain things with your classrooms at home. You can come here and start it. So there's a lot of freedoms that you even have school-wise here for your children. So if you add up the protection, you add up the community feel, you add up the neighborly feel, you add up just the overall hospitality of Idaho, plus our schools, it creates that perfect place to raise a family, which is probably a lot of the reason why you moved out of the state that you came from in itself. So again, more conservative values, more conservative values that people just weren't getting from the states that they were in. So they moved. Uh, another one that I just want to dive in here real quick, according to drugabusestatistics.org, Teenagers in Idaho are 7.98 less likely to have used drugs in the last month than the average American teen. Uh, I did a little bit more research into different states just to see where we kind of land. And really, uh, Texas came in at about 15% under. Uh, but if you look at states like California, California came in 24.47% over, according to their statistics, to have used drugs in the last month than the, than the average American team. So Idaho, again, just kind of fits the narrative that this is a great place to raise a family and it absolutely shows. Okay, numerous jobs openings will be the last stop on to some of our reasons of why the demand really is what it is. Again, I just kind of want to boil this back down. Uh, if you live in the Treasure Valley, I'm sure that you know why it is that you kind of came out. I'm sure that it had to do with the conservative bill. Uh, not only not to mention, too, uh, we do have uh, also other really cool things like our Second Amendment rights. Uh, this is an open carry state. You can carry a weapon around with you where you decide to go. Also, concealed weapon wise, you don't need a concealed weapons permit out here either. That is really, really attractive to most residents. Um, if you're paying attention to legislation, like say in Oregon, for example, they're trying to now put legislation on the books to get rid of hunting and fishing. Well, that's not going to happen here. So as you come in, it's just really that paradise if that's what you enjoy to do. But back to numerous job openings, uh, really the unemployment rates speak for themselves here. Uh, we did hit our historical low back in December of 2019 to where we got down to 2.5%. But even after the pandemic in April 2020, getting up to 11.6%, we have now gone all the way back and hit 3%. So we are one of the lowest unemployment rates in the entire United States. There are jobs, there are plentiful jobs. Now, where they are on the pay scale, of course, it will be something that you're probably thinking about. Well, you got a valid thought process. You know, where are they on the pay scale? There are low paying jobs and there are high paying jobs. 
So it kind of depends on what it is that you're coming in uh, to do here in the Treasure Valley or in Idaho itself. And of course, the availability of that job. And of course, we know the Boise area has the most population. It is the largest metropolitan area. So if you're looking for a job, again, the demand is going to be here. This is the epicenter for employment. So again, another factor as to why they are the algorithm had us as the most overvalued housing market in the entire United States and by a long shot, because this is the epicenter for the jobs. Uh, but again, we, we have a ton of jobs out there, only 3%. And the national average, uh, the, the median income, household income uh, here in Idaho is sitting at $75,300. Now, if we kind of take some averages of what lenders see with DTI, so you're kind of including, you know, um, like a basic car payment and some basic credit card de debt compared to this number. If you kind of just take some averages and throw it in there, um, I did reach out and I said, well, where do you think that we might be able to afford on the scale? And some of my, my lender friends, they come back and said, well, I think that honestly, you'll probably be around $450,000 uh, for, you know, for that median income that you'd be able to afford, uh, given that you have some basic debt. Okay. And so at $450,000, I went ahead and dived into my MLS to see what our current situation was look like. Right now, between Ada and Canyon counties, we got just a little over 2,000 homes available for sale. And 634 of those are below $450,000 for purchase. That's 30% of our market. That's 30% of our market that is still within an affordable range according just to the median income. Now, of course, as I mentioned, there are more low paying jobs. There are high paying jobs out here and this is the epicenter. And then of course, we also have to take into consideration too, the retirement factor. Some people want to come out and take their, they don't want to live in those states anymore and come out to states that have the conservative values and they come out and they buy a house and they buy it for their forever home and this will be it for them. They came out with their cash that they had from their equity and they bought out here free and clear. That also comes into play. So you can't not think about the retirement factor and the Treasure Valley in itself is a nice place to retire. There's a lot of amenities around. There's a lot of things to do, a lot of golf courses. Again, fishing, hunting, whatever it is you want to do, traveling, mountains, camping, it's here. So again, the demand is around our area and it's very, very attractive and it's bringing people in. Uh, when I came down to start talking about like, you know, optional mass mandate, school freedom, uh, homeschool uh, freedoms too as well, second amendment rights, et cetera. What some people really don't understand about the state of Idaho is that we are literally one of the least regulated states in the entire United States. And for those that have conservative values that want to steer more constitutional, Idaho is it. This is the place that has those values that you're looking for. And if you go around and you ask your neighbors when you do move here, they're going to tell you that. <laughs> so I just want to go ahead and point this out, though, because back in 20, 2019, uh, Governor Brad Little did join members of the Idaho legislation in announcing that Idaho had surpassed even South Dakota, South Dakota, and becoming the least regulated state in the country, all by simply cutting and simplifying 75% of the regulatory rules in one year. So when you think about Idaho, when you think about the demand and you think about why people are moving to the Boise area, it's all starting to click. It's all starting to make sense. So the income is here, okay? The jobs are here. The low unemployment rate is here. The freedoms are here in Idaho, okay? We, there's a lot of reasons as to why the demand is just absolutely shot through the roof and created our current situation. Now, keep in mind, overpriced housing, everybody, does not always equate to a housing bubble. And again, our demand is still there. It is still shooting straight forward for the moon. But I just want to kind of leave with one thing here, the last uh, tidbit that Fortune Magazine was talking about. Uh, they were basically kind of trying to give you some advice and say in the top 10 markets, potential buyers might want to consider renting and reinvesting money that they have otherwise would have put into home ownership. Well, 
Now, if you moved here last year, absolutely not, because you would have lost out on the 23.7% uh, increase that you had in the Treasure Valley. And we are still increasing, you know, price-wise. If you take a look at the numbers and you do take a look at some of my other videos that we got, like Mikey's monthly mortgage uh, updates, you can see that the Idaho, the, that the Treasure Valley in itself, especially between Ada and Canyon counties, has hit a plateau, a pricing plateau. Uh, but we are still expected because of the demand to creep up uh, anywhere from three to 5% or maybe even a little bit more than 5%. Uh, still the demand and the low supply is kind of ruling the roost here. Our supply has not gotten to that point to where, again, other personalities are saying that we're going to have a huge crash or, a hu or even a significant market correction coming up anytime soon. The inventory just isn't there yet. But we, again, we'll have to pay attention to what happens with interest rates and how much of the buyer pool that that might jump out when it does have to eventually happen. But so, sorry for the sidetrack, but coming right back here to what they're saying, well, let's talk about renting and reinvesting. Uh, in the Boise market alone, uh, last year, the Boise rental market jumped up 13%. So we are now kind of competing with some of the other big boys around the nation in terms of how much it costs to rent a home here. Okay, but in, another statistic is that in 2019, homeowners in the United States had a median net worth of $225,000, while renters had a net worth of just $6,300. Okay, so that's a really a 40% difference between both of the groups. It's really night and day. You can build wealth through investing in real estate. So according to NerdWallet, if you do take your money and you do invest it in the stock market, the average that return that you're going to expect to see is about 10% per year. Now, of course, again, if you invested in real estate in the Treasure Valley last year, you know that that was much better than that. Okay, you got 23.7%. And if you're actually out in Canyon County, you're looking at about 18 to 19%. So still, investing in real estate was the better option. And right now, we are still on an upward scale. We're, we plateaued. The, the indication has plateaued. But we're still expecting to come up, you know, overall for the year of 2021. And we'll see what happens in 2022. But if you're looking at what we've kind of already happened for this year, is the 10% is taking your money, putting it in rent, and then putting it in the stock market, the, the more viable option. So let's think about it. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay other expenses, okay? You have to have dedication to do this too, okay? You might want to go out and spend your money on a good time rather than invest it. That happens to be the case in most situations. So do you have that dedication to put your money in and be able to get the 10% return? Now, I've got my money with investment companies and if I got 10% on an average, hey, I'd be happy. So uh, portfolio people, just uh, you know, don't call me off the hook. I do like my investor. He's doing a great job for me, but 10% per year, I'd like to have that. But it, there's a lot of dedication that goes into this to do it. And again, is it really the better of the two options? I will leave this information out there for you to be able to determine for yourself. But considering us being the most overvalued housing market and the most popular housing market in the United States, I would give it some serious thought. Again, I would refer you back over to Mikey's monthly mar um, market monthly update of August. I know it's, it's even a tongue twister for me, and you can kind of see where the can where Ada and Canyon counties has kind of plateaued in, in the housing prices, but we are still anticipating to go up because of the demand. All right, well, we made it. We made it to the end of the PowerPoint presentation. So let's go ahead and let's take a minute to summarize why, again, the demand is so high here in the Treasure Valley and why we are labeled the most overpriced housing market in the entire United States. Now, I'm not going to disagree with Fortune Magazine according to their algorithm, but at the same time, are they really taking into account, again, the demand reasons? So let's revisit those. We're talking about employment. We've got plenty of it. We have the lowest unemployment rates or one of the lowest un unemployment rates here in the entire United States. We do have uh, high paying jobs. We do have some low, low paying jobs too as well. But mainly the Treasure Valley is the epicenter for those jobs. So that's gonna bring in a lot of the demand there itself. Community fields, uh, low crime rates, low drug abuse rates, 
neighborly atmospheres, school freedoms, Second Amendment rights, one of the least regulated states in the entire union is also bringing people to this area too as well. Conservative values. People want to raise their families here in the Treasure Valley. They want to raise their families here in Idaho. They didn't enjoy raising their families where they were at, and they were looking for sim more simplistic areas to be able to do so that can remain that way consistently. And I honestly believe that Idaho will remain consistent for quite some time to go, and I think you see that too. Hence the reason why you've moved here. And for all those that you ha that have moved to the Treasure Valley, I'm sure you're right there with me and agreeing with this and seeing it all the way around you. So unless if our demand really just absolutely flatlines, nobody wants to move here to Idaho anymore. Nobody wants the conservative values, the constitutional values, the school freedoms, uh, the low crime rates, the strong communities. Unless if nobody wants that, our demand is still going to be great. Uh, even if prices still continue to go up and even if interest rates still continue to go up, I still think that people want to move here laterally because of these values. Now, will it taper off? Sure. But is, there, is our inventory going to skyrocket to the point to where we're going to see this huge market crash like we had back in 2008 or even a, a, a housing correction that is anything significant? I just don't see it in the cards right now. We will see what happens when interest rates do raise up and as home values continue to go up. We have started our plateau here in the Treasure Valley in terms of overall home values, but I still think that we are gonna see an upturn just because of the demand compared to our supply. And again, our supply is still extremely low because everybody wants to come here. Well, again, thank you again, everybody, so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I was glad to be your host, and I hope that you can kind of take some of this with you if you are considering a potential move here to Idaho, or if you already live here in Idaho, especially the Treasure Valley area, I'm sure that you'll kind of agree with me and say, yep, that's right. And if you really do agree with me, I do invite you to share this video with others that are thinking about moving here and maybe you can go ahead and shed some light onto them as to why the Treasure Valley and Idaho is as popular as it is and why we have taken the title of the most overvalued housing market, especially the Boise area in the entire United States. Well, again, my name is Mike Petrus. I'm your star realtor of Star and the Treasure Valley. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in this market, you could reach me at 208-715-STAR. Again, that's 208-715-7827. And if you're a buyer and you're looking to begin your home shopping process, please use my search tool. You can find it at www.yourstarrealtor.com. Well, again, thank you very much for taking the time. I'm Mike Petrus. I'm your star realtor. Until we speak, I wish you nothing but the best, many blessings, and I look forward to calling you my neighbor. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.